All right. Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the anchor session of CME Palooza Spring entitled Why We Matter, Successful Strategies for Demonstrating the Value of CE Within Your Own Organization. Um, so this is the last of our nine presentations during CME Palooza Spring. Um, I'm Scott Kober, CME Palooza co-producer. Um, for those of you, of you who have been watching live today, you've probably seen more than you want of me, but uh, you just you just have to deal with it for for just a little bit longer. Um, and um, I want to thank everyone for sticking with us, for joining us for this session. <coughs> um, so a few housekeeping items before we begin. Um, certainly, I want to thank our sponsors um, who have supported CME Palooza Spring. They include gold sponsors. Intelligent Medical Decisions and Archimedics, Silver Sponsors Genentech, iMedics, and MedPage Today, and Bronze Sponsors Advanced Studies in Medicine, Clinical Care Options, CME Matters, CMEology, CME Outfitters, Decision Simulation, Educational Measures, Forefront Collaborative, Global Academy for Medical Education, Highmark CE, Impact Education, Infograph Ed, Platform Q Health Education, and Vindigo Medical Education. So there are a few ways that you can ask questions um, during this session for those folks who are watching it live. Um, you can use the MedPage Today text line to send in a question. The number's on your screen, 267-6660-CME. Um, you can click on the Q&A um, app within the Google Hangout um, box and submit a question that way, or you can tweet your question to us using the CME Palooza hashtag. Um, and we've gotten some great questions all day, and, and hopefully we will get some more during this session. Um, so here's a disclosure <laughs> slide, so please keep in mind, um, especially with this session, we have quite a variety of people representing quite a variety of institutions, so the opinions and conclusions discussed are their own and do not represent um, their employer, parent, company, or any affiliates. Um, so with that, um, I'll kind of uh, briefly kind of give a very brief introduction to our panel, and I know Derek, our moderator, will kind of introduce folks a little bit uh, more formally as, as we go along. So um, uh, we have Derek Dietz. Derek is the president of Improved CME LLC. We have Sarah Ann Whitbeck, and Sarah Ann is the director of CME at Intermountain Healthcare. We have Wanda Johnson, and Wanda is the Senior Director of Meetings and Education at the Endocrine Society. Um, we have Marissa Seligman. Marissa is the President and Chief Operating Officer of Clinical Care Operations. And finally, we have Heather Guerrero. Heather is the Associate Director of Independent Medical Education at Gilead Sciences. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Derek to kind of get things started. Great. Thank you, Scott. So really, what was the genesis for uh, this idea to have a, a panel and talk about why we matter, uh, internal advocacy? Really, uh, it, it came out of the Alliance Advocacy Committee. And um, so uh, Marissa, Heather, and I are on that committee. And, uh, and then in addition, Sarah Ann is on the membership, leads the membership committee. And we really uh, we wanted to have an opportunity to um, help folks in CME think about um, what strategies they could implement uh, to demonstrate the value of CME within their own organization. Really, advocacy, many of us think of external advocacy or folks visiting Washington to talk to uh, legislators as advocacy. But for sure, all of us are working to um, really communicate our value within our organizations and externally. So this focuses on that internal advocacy. And why would we need to do that? Well, we're all working to improve health care, but sometimes we're challenged with art articulating our value um, and impact on health care. Really, the kinds of things that we need to do within our organization might be some of the following. We, we might be looking to improve, of course, we're looking to improve clinician knowledge, performance, and patient health. But you may be needing to retain or grow your budget, expand your mission, uh, justify your department's um, existence, uh, get a raise, uh, justify your salaries. Um, perhaps uh, 
enhance opportunities for collaboration between departments at your own organization, and then make a contribution to the overall uh, continuing education enterprise. So our objective is to focus on identifying those strategies to help us demonstrate our value within our own organizations, and of course, we encourage everyone to implement those strategies, as our panelists have. So, next. So, uh, Sarah Ann Whitbeck, um, of Director of uh, CME um, at Intermountain Healthcare in Utah, is our first panelist. And so she is responsible for CME in their system-wide interdisciplinary accredited education program. And she serves, uh, she currently represents the American Hospital Association on the ACCME Accreditation Review Committee. And she also chairs the membership committee, as I've mentioned, the membership committee of the Alliance. Sarah Ann. Thank you so much, and thank you for the opportunity to participate um, in this this conference today. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about Intermountain Healthcare, so everyone will know kind of who we are. Um, if you haven't heard about us, um, we are a nonprofit integrated delivery system based in Salt Lake City, Utah. Our claim to fame, as we were mentioned in the State of the Union a couple years back, if, if you remember President Obama um, did mention us for our, our um, outcomes delivery research, um, which was pretty exciting. So we have 23 hospitals and provide about 50% of the inpatient care in Utah. You can see the blue dots that are indicated on the screen um, show where our major hospitals are. Um, we have thir about 1,300 employed physicians in our medical group. 3,300 independent physicians that are affiliated um, or are part of our insurance panel, Select Health, um, and then a total of about 33,000 um, employees total. Um, our CME program um, is uh, system-wide with the exception of our pediatric hospital which maintains their own independent um, accredited uh, education department which is uh, affiliated with our local university and so um, they they're a standalone program but with that exception we uh, are system-wide in function we have ACCME and ANCC accreditation as well as an application pending through the ACPE um, and we hope to have positive results to report in July about that accreditation so that gives you just a little a little background about who we are um, and then for this, we have a video to show, but on this one, you may need to turn up your sound as we were testing it. It seemed like that might need to, to be. So, Derek, if you want to roll the video, that would be great. I chose healthcare for one simple reason. I like to take care of people. You need to stay current on the knowledge that you have to be able to continue to help people. The literature shows us that six years after we completed our residency, our knowledge base is out of date. Our goals are to provide the most current clinical education that's available for our clinicians. On average, we sponsor approximately 50 professional type conferences and about 85 regularly scheduled series, which ends up to about 25,000 educational interactions. Today, we also have online learning, we have smaller group conferences with hands on experience training, we have audience responses to generates discussion. One of the most important characteristics between a patient and a physician is trust. They don't want a physician that's 20 years out of date on their knowledge. So CME keeps us right on that cutting edge. So this video is an example of something that we we put together back in 2011, um, my, myself and a couple members of my team, um, specifically with our um, communications specialist, to talk about this concept, the, the why we matter. And these are some of our physician champions that, that you saw speaking, um, as, as well as, of course, um, I'm in the video and, and my supervisor. Um, to talk about this concept of why why we matter and why it's important that, that people stay current on their continuing medical education for more than just um, maintenance, of, maintenance of certification and maintenance of licensure. Um, and it was interesting as we started talking to people how much they had to say. Obviously the video was only a minute, but we had 
um, many hours of footage to, to trim down because people really are invested in our culture and, and we were very pleased with the, the overall result. We used this video, um, played it at the start of many of our activities. We posted it on our Facebook page, on our general website, um, and really tried to to get this message out. Um, I think you know, at that time we had um, a communication specialist who was specializing in video and so it's um, more of a professional quality than, than we have produced in, in subsequent years. Um, but I think it's something relatively simple that, that other people can do and that I would encourage, encourage in um, other programs if you have the resources or champions that are interested. Um, so this next slide, James Reinertsen um, is, is someone that we have quoted and used in, in um, some of our materials saying, physicians hold a peculiar kind of trump card. They do not make safety transformation happen, but they can prevent it from happening. And I think this is, is not only true of safety transformation, but really of any changes that we're, we're implementing. And, and I included this because I think it speaks to culture. Um, our physicians um, are very invested, and, and I think that is, is the first step of making um, continuing education really matter within your organization. Um, we very much um, have a strong culture of continuing education and continuing quality improvement um, with this ongoing learning process. And I think it starts from, from the very top. There's an expectation of a certain um, in, in above just what's required for for licensure and and basic standards, um, we also have an internal expectation for more than just more than just what the state requires in terms of continuing education. And I think that um, that culture that Intermountain Healthcare drives certainly helps um, helps drive this mission for us. Um, the next step that, that really pushes this forward for us and, and helps demonstrate our internal uh, value is our CME committee support. So the members of our CME team um, include the following individuals. So medical leadership from all of our clinical programs, nursing, pharmacy, um, our Institute for Healthcare Delivery Research, legal, um, our graduate medical education department to, to pull in our residents and other individuals, Select Health, which is our, our health plan, as well as other clinical areas like lab and, and um, our clinical services that don't have their own defined clinical programs. And this really helps uh, define that we have champions and individuals who know what we're doing and are able to tell others about it. And, and when we have successes, that then we can take them back to our our committee and and celebrate those items and tell them the important things that we're doing that then they can go out and share with with the other members of their teams um, with their clinical teams and or leadership teams um, because we are spread across the state of Utah it's very important to us to have these individuals going out and and telling others the great things that that we think we're doing um, and then finally the the third piece I would say that that helps us with driving home this mission of why we matter is really our mission statement overall for Intermountain Healthcare. So our mission statement is helping people live the healthiest lives possible. And one of our goals within CME is, is within our internal program is to relate all the things we're doing back to this this overall mission statement that, that we're fitting into what the overall program is doing. Um, or excuse me, what the overall corporation is doing of, of helping, helping people live the healthiest lives possible. And by fitting into that mission statement, then we get further, um, further buy-in from the corporation. Um, the final slide I have is just about teaching in general and the value of CME. I, I recently had the opportunity to do some humanitarian work down in Peru, and it was interesting to me how um, we got down there and, and it started out as this teaching experience. You can see one of our physicians teaching one of the this medical students that was there with us. And then Derek, if you want to click through and um, then we started, there we go. Then as we got there by um, later in week one and then again in week two, they, they said, well, we, you know, we, we know you do educational lectures. We, you know, had translators and started chatting with them and said, we realize you do, you do education and, and would you share with us? And, and we said, we'd be happy to. We had a group of physicians with us. And um, what quickly came about was, was grand rounds in, in Peru. And they were so grateful and saying, you know, we're so, so helpful for the humanitarian work, but more grateful still for, for this sharing of knowledge and this education. And it just further drove home to me how important CME is um, and how grateful I am to be a part of this industry that, that continues to give back and, and grow, uh, grow professionals even more. Um, and with that, 
I let's see. I think Wanda is up next. Yeah, just a, a quick question, Sarah Ann. Sure. Um, the video that you uh, put together is several years old now. So yes. if you you've done subsequent ones, but what? How have your messages changed over time? Or do you discuss performance change or quality improvement, patient safety type things more? Or how would you say your message has changed? I would say um, definitely more so about about outcomes measurement. Um, at that time, we didn't have an outcomes analyst on our team, um, and let's. See, we've now had an outcomes analyst for about 18 months, and so the the newer version or the version that we're about to to release is more about the outcomes that we've been able to demonstrate, and and the most recent version or the one that we're we're just about to is discussing the difference in an activity that we had live on site versus one that we launched online, and comparing the outcomes difference um, to be able to say you know both were valid and had impact, but but let's look at the actual outcomes of, of these different educational modalities. So um, it is different now that we have a specific outcomes analyst dedicated to our program. We're focusing that direction more so now, whereas at that time, as you can see, we were talking more um, just from a, a physician-driven angle. Great. So thank you for, for representing the, the health system uh, perspective here. And, and now uh, Wanda Johnson will, uh, will give a society uh, perspective. She's the Senior Director of Meetings and Education at the Endocrine Society in Washington, D.C., and she's been with the Society for more than 20 years and is responsible for all of their meetings and education programs, including an annual meeting and ex expo with uh, over 9,000 participants and 40 other educational activities for physicians and allied health professionals. She's a surveyor for the ACCME and regularly presents at national meetings such as the Alliance meeting and she's a board member for the Professional Convention Management Association. Wanda? Good afternoon. So my goal is to provide you a bit of a perspective from a uh, specialty society um, and to also uh, give you a bit of an understanding of some of the challenges that uh, we have had in uh, making our value known. So the Endocrine Society is an international membership organization. We have over 18,000 members uh, who are all over the world. We have about 73 or 74 countries that are now represented. We're a little unique in that we have a tripartite membership uh, which includes uh, basic scientists, clinical scientists, and physicians. So we really do cover bench to bedside in the, the looking at the educational needs of our members. Uh, education is a core value of the society, but it's also an expensive investment. And we now have an education team of 11 staff, and this actually was sort of the, the focus that we had to bring forth to show the value of what it is that we do. Um, I'll also mention that we are accredited by the ACCME, and um, the, that accreditation and, uh, again, providing education to physicians is certainly a core value of the society. Excellent. So I'm going to tell a story of a problem that we experienced uh, several years ago. We had um, the, the wonderful uh, growth that uh, was very prevalent a few years ago in that our educational prog programs were quickly expanding, um, resulting in staff overload. And it was staff overload at, at all levels, um, trying to do uh, too much with too few. We had projects that suffered from lack of, of attention. They either languished and took a long time to be delivered, or they were not delivered maybe with the quality level that we expect. Um, we realized that there was a need for new staff um, with different skill levels, and we had to sell a reorganization of the department that included increasing staffing. And this was in a time where, you know, the organization really was trying to uh, stay, quote unquote, lean and mean. Um, and uh, staffing was not something that you just said, oh, by the way, I need a new staff person, and it happened. So what we did was we realized we had to show um, why we matter 
and why what we do as an education team matters to the organization. It was already acknowledged that this was a key core value of what we do. Um, our annual meeting and our journals rank number one and number two in terms of, of what the members found to be the most value with the organization. So we knew that the education program generated revenue. We are viewed as one of the revenue streams for the organization. Um, we also knew that we had education programs that we needed to create to meet the needs of a diverse membership base. It, it wasn't that we were just dealing with physici physicians. Um, we were also dealing with clinical scientists and, again, basic scientists. We also realized that there had been a change in the environment. It was not the same landscape it had been previously in that educational grant proposals needed a new level of sophistication. And we also found that the reliance on members uh, being able to really help us develop the programs, develop the proposals, um, was changing based on their availability. I mean, everyone became, uh, you know, extremely busy and while uh, what they were doing with the society was important, it was not part of their core job. It wasn't why they got paid. So they, were, they had the challenge of trying to figure out, you know, how can they work more effectively with us, and we needed staff that could work with them. So what we did was we had to sell to the C-suite. Suite. We had to help get our executive leadership to understand what we needed in order to, to stay effective and competitive. So we knew that we needed to stay competitive in securing grants. In other words, we needed to focus on assessment and outcome. While we, you know, always had done evaluations, we hadn't necessarily gotten into the, the, the more complex levels of assessing outcomes, and we knew that that needed to change. We also needed to manage the growing portfolio of not only CME activities, but also MOC activities, because again, the society was trying to meet the needs of our, of our members, and at that time, MOC was a rising uh, area of interest. So we needed to have dedicated project managers and a different type of expertise among the staff. Um, we, we, ex we anticipated that while we had been growing um, previously, that with this change in uh, staffing, we could uh, create additional programs which would increase revenue with increased capacity. In other words, the, the better trained the staff is to be able to uh, manage more complex proposals, manage more complex projects, manage um, co collaborative engagement, the, the more opportunity that we would have for the organization. And so based on our pre pre preparing a sort of a proposal on what it was we thought we needed and, and what we anticipated the results to be, we got an agreement to reorganize the department and bring in specialized staff. And what we did so that it wasn't, wouldn't be a, a, just a complete hit to the budget, we did graduated staff growth. So we added two staff, then we added additional, one additional staff, and then an additional staff person over about a one-year period. And what we did was we focused on, we brought in someone who um, provided us um, analytical uh, skills, again focusing on assessment and outcome measurement. Um, we focused on online learning, an area that we wanted to grow as we were going to be uh, bringing an LMS on board. Um, we focused on our accreditation. And so the goal was to, again, try to um, get, the, get the organization to understand that while we had experienced phenomenal growth, without uh, a, a true commitment to bringing in the right staff, we were going to stagnant. We were going to be stagnant, and in fact, we might we might fall below what we had hoped to accomplish because we just didn't have the bandwidth to do it. So I think that there is truly an importance to understanding what the value proposition is of the CME unit, what the value proposition is not only from a revenue perspective but also value to the members. And based on that, we were able to build on the, the team that we already had by bringing in additional staff who were able to really enhance the, the, what we're doing and how we're doing it. Great. Thank you, Wanda. So I, I took two, two things uh, from the end that I, and if you can just validate that they were some of your key messages. 
one was fairly obvious is the, the additional revenue that would come from the additional emphasis. But then the second thing was the, the, uh, the value to your members. And those were key messages that you communicated upwards to the C-suite, as you call it. Yes. It was, you know, that we, we really focused on what we could do um, from the member perspective and w how this change would enhance uh, our ability to interact with them. So instead of asking the members to, to help us write um, uh, post-test questions, for example, we now have someone on staff that can draft those and then send them to the member to review. So they're not having to start from scratch, but they're better able to, to quickly respond to uh, a request. Uh, you know, reviewing something is a lot easier than creating something. And so um, we, we wanted to show that we would be able to help with some time savings for them to still stay engaged with us while creating the educational programs that they have really come to rely on us to create at the level that they expect. So you know, it's it's the it has to have um, a certain degree of quality to have the Endocrine Society's name on it, and by them being able to 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 work with us uh, in a different way, given that we have a different capacity on the staff, I think that everyone has found that to be a win-win. And then in terms of the additional revenue, again, you know, it you have to be able to 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 measure whether or not the educational uh, engagement is in fact changing physician behavior and if you don't have good design in your uh, assessment processes and then in your evaluation processes and and being able to measure whether or not there was a change um, you really are not competitive anymore and so we were able to uh, ensure that when we submit a grant we are um, as competitive as, as all of the other folks that are going after that dollar and and I and it has resulted in additional grants that that we have um, been able to secure because we changed the way that we were writing and interacting um, with trying to develop those grants. Great, Thank, thanks Wanda. And uh, Dr. Seligman, Marissa is our next uh, uh, panelist and she represents the medical education company Perspective on uh, why we matter. She's the president and chief operating officer of Clinical Care Options, a highly recognized education organization providing continuing education for clinicians using technology platforms that integrate innovative online and live formats and decision support tools. She's a very active volunteer uh, in the CE, CME community. She's on the Alliance's uh, Advocacy Committee and on the uh, Almanac Editorial Board. And she's also past CME Palooza <laughs> presenter, and she, she really wanted to make sure that everyone knew she's a diehard fan of poodles and New England sports. Go Pats, Sox, Bruins, and Celtics. So, yep. Marissa. <laughs> Thank you so much, Derek. And it's a great honor to be uh, here with you and the other panelists, and I, I thank uh, thank you for the invitation to be here. And and Derek, you do kind of notice that you and I are doing a lot of things together for all these years too on the Almanac and on the Advocacy Committee. So it's a uh, it's a great overlap of of us. And again, thank you for having me here. So um, my job, my task is to uh, to go through the perspectives on. Uh, uh, from a medical education company on helping our staff and others who we work with uh, understand the value of who we are and advocate for that. So uh, just as a little bit of context for who CCO is, we are a medical education company, as, Eric, as, uh, as we were introduced in terms of by Derek, and uh, we have a, about a 60, uh, 60 employees, 60 full-time employees who are split between the office here in Reston Virginia and uh, throughout the country and also overseas. And we have an extensive network of uh, national faculty, and this is, I'm sorry, national and global faculty, content matter experts, continuing medical education providers, associations, and other collaborators. And one of the things that we know working with our staff, working with faculty, working with uh, supporters, collaborators, is there are the ongoing uh, challenges of CME, and, and we are very transparent with our staff in recognizing those challenges. And 
one of the ways that we work with them is to help understand, have them understand competition in CME grants, how there's a lot of diversity within the CME and CE community with people thinking the same and different. There's completely changing tides in any one year, any other month of the CME funding models and regulations. And he is learning and listening. And I do that. Uh, learning and listening, if you will, uh, to our to our constituents, through collaborators, learning through uh, faculty, learning through others in terms of what's happening in the CME industry, and that progress is and change comes within, and that the best way to advance our uh, our areas in CME and CE is for the staff, the employees, the CCOers, to be advocates for what we do, and that doesn't just include uh, for our company, it's for working with our faculty, talking to friends, talking to other people in other businesses to really advocate the value of CME and CE and the impact on clinicians and healthcare. So what we do is we communicate and active messages and for folks to act upon in the value of CME and why industry supports and why clinicians also engage addressing health care gap, translation of science to practice, improving patient care, social responsibility and transparency, response, helping you responsibly use resources. Uh, that we provide expertise in specific disease area and therapeutic areas, and we can help advance the healthcare arena through our educational design, development, and outcomes. And that key is the activity assessments, the data that we get back from our participants, to lay the groundwork for more effective uh, educational programs and impact on healthcare and and associated data. It's, what we convey is that it's really, really important to talk to faculty, to talk amongst themselves, to talk to others in the in our CME and CE arena and again others outside of us to demonstrate an advocacy, to be able to say we do really terrific things in our activities in by being in continuing medical education in CE. So part of that is communicate. We communicate with our staff through quarterly all hand what we call all hands meeting. And part of that is a lay of the landscape of CE and CE. What's the environment? What's the regulatory environment? What's the funding environment look like? How are we doing in our activities? And really get everyone who is internal and not on the front lines, not like us who are on this panel and others uh, in CME and CU who are externally facing, but the people who are inside who are doing the work, who are really grinding out uh, a lot of, of the activities that we're doing, you know, to help them to understand what's happening in our world, in our industry, positive and challenges, and get them uh, to help problem solve with us, help identify where we can come up with solutions relative to uh, educational activities or relative to communications, whether presentations, external presentations, and really get everyone aligned and through that all-hands meeting. We also have monthly communication. We have a monthly newsletter where we include industry updates, uh, research updates, individual program and activity updates, what we've achieved, what we've done, and dissemination of faculty and participant feedback. So again, getting everyone aligned on the value of CME and CE and what we're doing, but not only what we're doing, what the community out there is doing as well. We align through uh, and to ensure that everyone is focused on the value of what they do in our in our company and how it helps advance a CME and CE. Uh, we have department and team communications constantly improving what we're doing and how we're doing it and to ensure that we are most effective and efficient and compliant if you will, in all that we do. And critically, we align our department and our, our company and our department and individual objectives all together so that we align by through this alignment, we're seeking to get everyone focused on doing the right education at the right time to get to the right practitioners to get to the needed uh, outcomes, impact and outcomes. So again, conveying that what we're doing starts with this, and that's our sentence. You go to the next page there, Derek. One more. There you go. And that we start with this, that we're dedicated to providing, and this is our internal mission. We do have this, and we come back to this 
and through our company objectives, our department objectives, and individual objectives on how to provide healthcare professionals with just-in-time, impactful, measurable education and decision support tools of superior quality and value to improve patient care. That's our mission. So we are, we try, we're focused clearly on doing education that contributes to healthcare and provides value and to the health healthcare providers and to patients. And the invaluable is not necessarily that CCO is invaluable, although okay, as president, I'll say we are, but that's not really the intent. It's that the person themselves, the employee, the staff person, the manager, director, whoever it is, everyone is invaluable to making this happen. And so that's where we align. And our strategy is what's not indicated there is often com often people, organizations, companies doesn't make a difference. We'll say, okay, what do we do and how do we do it? And then eventually get to why. We, we invert that. We say, why are we doing this? So we always understand it's about providing the right education, the right people, the right time, with the right, uh, in, in the right way, measuring in the right way. And that then translates into the how we do it, and then that forms what we do. Um, Great. Thank, thank you. you very much, uh, Marissa. And uh, Marissa, if. Um, yeah. Uh, just a, a question for you, and, and I'm happy to give you some time to respond while we listen to Heather, but um, for you to think about this. But when you communicate um, the greatest things you're doing to folks senior to you, and I know there aren't very many, but uh, when you when you communicate that upwards in your organization, what are one or two of the ones that you are delighted to share with them about your value? Sure. So. It, if you'd give that some thought, and we'll move on to Heather, and then we'll come back to that. That's a similar question for all of our panelists, uh, if you think about that. So Heather, representing now the commercial supporter uh, perspective, she is Associate Director of Independent Medical Education at Gilead Sciences, and has spent most of her professional life dedicated to uh, liver disease, hepatitis C in particular, and in fact, she started working with her father, a hepatologist, when she was 14 and worked with him for 10 years. Uh, she's worked in hospitals and colleges of medicine doing CME programs, patient education, advocacy, and clinical trials. And her focus at Gilead has been to push the department to support high-impact education measured through advanced outcomes. She is a certified uh, healthcare CPD professional and has a master's degree in religion, philosophy, and society. So wise words from Heather. <laughs> Hello. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, are we doing okay on time? Do we still? We're, you're uh, great. Yeah, we're great. Perfect. So um, let's just launch right in. Uh, I guess my slides moved around a little bit, but that's okay. So uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the way that we talk about the value of CME within my organization. And I'm going to show you some examples of some of the regular reports that I share with my uh, senior management. And I also want to talk about how we talk about CME. And uh, yeah, I've listed a few different things here. The first one being you know, the education, par education partners participate. You know, as soon as we support something, we are all a team. We're all a team trying to deliver excellent education um, with the same focus in mind, which is the patient who's in the hands of physicians. Uh, physicians that, you know, I always say that think of the moment you walk into a physician office and maybe you're with your child or you're an uh, aging parent. That moment when the physician walks into the room is what our entire enterprise is about. It's at that moment that you want that individual, that physician, to have all of the knowledge about whatever it is, issue you're coming to see them. And that's really the inspiration for everything that we do. So part of the value story um, is knowing your audience. So uh, for example, and this will this will um, kind of unfold, but if you're the education partner and you're providing information to the industry sponsor, you know, speak our language, give us data. Um, supporting educate, supporting metrics on the educational impact and let excellence speak for itself. 
And this is the way that um, I have developed and really focused our uh, the programs that we support is uh, just focus on excellence and support excellent education, uh, work with excellent education partners, and then the story is really easy to tell because the story itself is based on excellence and showing the value of those programs. So I just give a quick example here. You know, the, you you hear back from a uh, education partner, oh my gosh, the program went great. And it's like, really, show me the data. Like, I, I don't want to just hear it went great. That's not something I can communicate um, necessarily throughout, in a meaningful way throughout my organization. But if you show me a pretest and a post-test and how the, the uh, attendees change uh, within the, at the, the time frame of the education, to me that's meaningful. That shows the excellence, um, the quality of the programming that you're doing. I think within the CME community, we, um, you know, I really want to see and continue to push myself to raise the bar of excellence um, in, in things like CME Palooza where we can um, really talk about pushing ourselves and I love that each of the panelists here all talked about their their organizations and how they've moved into um, advanced outcomes and that's a similar message that I have here that's been part of that push for excellence. So um, you now we have some things that we see sometimes within our um, CME programs uh, publishing in clinical journals um, not, you know, I say not settle for the education of the easy education event. Push your teams to move the enterprise past the norm, and don't uh, not supporting so-so education, not creating so-so education, and not um, kind of settling for it. Uh, and then in terms of IMED personnel, so within the industry uh, uh, companies, to share data about what program about program impact with key stakeholders like any of you in any arena, you get busy and sometimes forget to share that data out again. And it's absolutely um, important to continually tell that story. Um, it's, it makes a much bigger impact when it's been told a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. And I will get into exactly what I do report. But uh, data and evidence-driven presentations. Uh, so they actually can see the advanced outcomes and all of the quality work that uh, is being done. And being consistent, so I have found that we've taken steps to educate the senior management that we report through on what Moore's outcomes level are, to share you know, what um, the latest data is in adult learning theory, so that you know you don't try to over teach but to just keep those things as part of the vocabulary so that we, you can talk about that when it comes to talking about the value of the programs that you're supporting. So um, what do we do specifically to share our value story? So each therapeutic area that we have uh, has a trimester update meeting. Uh, you can see the people that they get invited. It's really a diverse uh, group and it has our senior leadership involved. And we do sort of a, a, a program overview, just talking about the types of programs, uh, you know, anticipated number of attendees, that kind of thing. And then really going through some specific programs that we select to highlight to our internal um, stakeholders. So as we do that process, we are then comparing each of the metrics that we get from the uh, education partners and all of the outcomes that we're seeing and we're selecting the ones that will tell the clearest and most, the easiest to um, the most accessible metrics so it's very very important um, again to just push for that that excellence so that we're supporting education that is is high high caliber and is uh, able to show why it is high caliber and what the impact it's doing so um, we also have an, another mechanism for sharing data, which is through goals and objectives. So this is also a trimester uh, report that we provide to each of the therapeutic areas about those specific metrics for that quarter. And uh, we also report up through our uh, group, which is medical services, and uh, provide audit reports for select programs as we go to the different ones to um, audit or monitor the programs, just providing something about them so that uh, they're not to inundate them with meaningless data, but to really just keep it fresh and, and, 
and just small amounts, almost uh, little uh, tiny updates so that they can kind of always be in the loop. And uh, then finally, you know, uh, remembering to send out milestones like papers that are published or um, oral presentations that were accepted and, and to keep that stuff uh, in the minds of the stakeholders around us. So now I'm just giving you some examples of slides that I use. This is um, our mission statement and I like to uh, keep this as a focus uh, because it does talk specifically about what the end, the end result that we're trying to have and that is to impact patient care. Um, we can move to the next slide. I have a few different ways of talking about this, but this is uh, education that impacts and then it goes through each of the ways that we impact, some of the details that are off to the right change, uh, but I have found people really respond well to something like this. Um, it, it raises a lot of questions for them because they don't always understand what CME has to do with um, you know, ACOs or what CME has to do with PQRS measures. And so it's a, it's a great way to really highlight the, the depth of impact that we are having with these high impact programs. Next slide. Uh, we all know and love this, <laughs> uh, uh, but I do, I have spent a lot of time educating internally about Moore's outcomes and what they mean and how that uh, relates to uh, the way that we talk about high impact programs. So where level uh, five, six, and seven, I, I think of as kind of always being high impact, but there's always surprising exceptions. And level four, most many times it is high impact, and uh, level four is just kind of a mixed bag, and it really takes our team, my um, IMED uh, managers and senior managers, to make that call about if they are considered high impact or not. Uh, next slide is just a description of what we call um, high impact. Uh, this is just um, an example of the definitions and one way in which I will present this data to show that we're moving towards higher and higher impact programs. Um, this is an example of just how we share some of the industry information. This was an article in the New England Journal of Medicine and talked about making education that's sticky and that's another sort of way to talk about impact. And, and then I actually include metrics, and we all know what these look like. You can kind of just flip through the next three, um, and, and you know, we, we share these uh, with the teams and, and plan to spend a lot of time answering questions and talking about that, them with them. So again, I guess so just to wrap up a reminder, you know, my perspective is that we promote value by supporting good education by delivering excellent education, uh, uh, creating excellent education, and to continue to push the envelope with what is done within CME, because I think there's a lot of ways that we can improve what we're doing. Um, and you know, I look forward to the coming years where we're all beginning to, to see and make those changes within our organizations, as my panelists have um, demonstrated here. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much. So uh, I'll pose my question uh, to the group again, and, and that is uh, if there, you know, if there's one uh, value statement or uh, communication of, uh, of value regarding CME that is your favorite or you've had the most success with in terms of communicating that within your organization, what would that be? So. Uh, Marissa, you've had uh, the longest. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. What's your response to that question? Uh, well, I I don't necessarily think it is up, if you will. There's, uh, okay. Jeff, you know, is the, the founder of CCO and uh, and my boss, if you will. Uh, but we really considered in terms of the entire organization, and we're accountable to the organization to uh, to really tell them like what we've achieved. And and demonstrate that, and then what's the next? What else do we have to do? What else do we want to? Uh, what gaps or needs or education design do we want to develop, so that we can really move that far of impacting patient care? What we 
really like to do is say to disseminate it. So we're also very focused on ensuring that uh, programs that we do that are publishable and presentable actually do get there as well. So that's that's what we like to to disseminate externally and say these are right. what we have achieved and and ensure that we can share it also with our colleagues so that they can learn and apply and, and uh, advance what they're doing as well through our education and through others. Great. That is Thank you. It, it, it sounds like it's part of a continuous quality improvement process. Those communications are always, here's what we've done and here's how we can improve and get better. Absolutely. That's great. And and Sarah, Sarah Ann, what would your response be to that question? A, a values statement about uh, CME that you love to communicate to folks. Um, one of the ways that we enjoy communicating our, our overall value, because we're a nonprofit, um, we have to demonstrate the value to the community that we serve. Um, and so we do report um, our overall benefit to the corporation in terms of the number of people that that we partnered with um, within the community as well as the number of clinicians that we educated during the past year. And then that information goes in our annual report every year. And so that's right. a, a major piece for us that we're very proud of um, to, to use that information um, on a system-wide basis to, to report back. So. Great. Thank you. And Wanda, your thoughts on that? So I think for us, we, we view CME as sort of the core for, uh, or the springboard, I should say, for a larger focus on knowledge integration. Um, you know, we, we have uh, information and uh, uh, knowledge coming from many different quarters within the organization, and we really want to start using that to, to really sort of bring all of those together to create... Um, programs that will truly be um, not only for our core endocrine audience, but also for the teams and, the, and, and all of the health professionals that are, are working on uh, endocrine disorders uh, because there are some, you know, there are some endocrine related epidemics out there and it's going to take more than core endocrinologists to really tackle uh, diabetes and obesity, for example. So, you know, we're really using CME sort of as a I would say a springboard to tr to really try to leverage um, all of the resources that we have into addressing some of these you know major health uh, epidemics. Great, thank you. And then Heather, your thoughts when when you get to when you have those trimester meetings that you mentioned, what's your favorite thing to say about seeing? I my favorite thing is my mission statement. Our our mission statement which is Gilead supports excellent education that impacts physician behavior and ultimately uh, improves patient care. So that's my favorite, uh, that's kind of my mantra. And then with my teams and with education partners and with all of us within the CME community, my uh, mantra is kind of be excellent. Just be Great. excellent. <laughs> and, and so the, 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 the uh, evidence that you use to support uh, how you're progressing on your mission is is those some of those slides, those outcome slides, yep. that, that are evidence of your approach. How much time do you get in those trimester meetings to meet with senior staff? Um, well, there are meetings, so they, you know, we we hold them for an hour. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, good. So I noticed some themes. Some these are very very general themes in some of the comments in all of the comments that were made. I'd like to share those and get your perspectives and then we'll need some concluding remarks. But I noticed that frequency is uh, is key here. That there's got to be uh, a, a certain amount of frequency of messages, a consistency in giving messages uh, internally. Uh, the next one was I heard words like easiest, clearest, small amounts of information that can be communicated. And so those were two themes that I saw. Does anybody have any further uh, thoughts or um, comments on what you heard, perhaps from a different uh, perspective that you liked and you'd like to employ? Any, any thoughts on that? This is where somebody gets to raise their hand and uh, <laughs> thank you. Well, I think it's, you know, be, it's be, uh, 
clarity is so important because in each of our organizations, sometimes you only get that touch point. Uh, you know, you get someone's bandwidth only for so long. And so having those, that consistency, having that clarity, and having those multiple touch points is really, really essential to um, a clear message. Right. And uh, Marissa, did you have a comment there? Yes. Uh, tapping into uh, what Heather said, that clear message is also about where you need to keep going. You cannot uh, rest on what you've done. You mm -hmm. have to be looking, evolving, and changing, and, and not in, in haphazard ways, but in ways that really align with what is needed externally, if you will. So it's about what's needed internally and also externally, but it is also about you know, keeping it clear and focused and making concrete change and progress to meet the needs. And, and that, that sounded very high end and global, but if you think about it every day, if you look at it and say, what do I need to, what can I do to advance what we're doing every day and do it in ways that are both incremental and dramatic, but getting to the, uh, the thinking about what you're doing and how you can do it better. That's, that's I think, also a message that was here uh, with all of us about change. Great, thank you. So uh, in conclusion then, uh, do any of you have any final uh, comments, uh, very brief summary comments that you'd like to make? Uh, now would be a great time to hear those from you, and then I'll have a couple concluding remarks. Anybody have any, any other things they'd like to share that I may have missed? OK. Great. Well, thank you for your participation, and we appreciate uh, our panelists. Um, the uh, again, the uh, there will be some additional resources that you'll see coming from the alliance and the various committees uh, to help uh, the membership with this kind of internal advocacy and external advocacy, and uh, so we look forward to doing those things. Thank you again. Uh, to our panelists and to CME Palooza for this opportunity. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Derek. And um, just 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 a few slides to wrap things up. As this is our anchor session um, for folks who um, this is have not have not uh, completed our survey. There is a short survey link at the top of the live tab. This will help us get a sense of who's watching CME Palooza Spring. Um, it's a very short survey. It should only take you about five minutes. For those folks who are wondering what's next. Um, CME Palooza Fall will be held on Wednesday, October 21st. So if you want to go into your Outlook calendar now and mark yourself off as busy. Um, and uh, you might want to stay tuned for a few more special CME Palooza announcements coming soon, um, assuming that Derek and I can get our acts together. Um, and Derek has actually joined us for the last part of this to, uh, to finish off CME Palooza Spring. So Derek, do you want to make uh, any closing statements? Do you have a gavel to, uh, to bang or anything like that? Nope, I got nothing. Just uh, thanks to everyone who joined. Uh, thanks to all the presenters. Like I told someone, uh, CME Palooza is only as good as our presenters, so it's always great to have such excellent faculty. Um, and the only other thing is if you have any suggestions of topics you might be interested in for CME Palooza Fall, we're always open to suggestions, so feel free to email either Scott or I um, with any suggestions you might have. Otherwise, I think that's all I have. Okay, so keep an eye on the blog. Um, you can watch all these sessions in an archive version when they're done, and um, we will hopefully see everyone in a few months. Sounds good. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Thank you.